Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Community Watch here on Metro TV with me, Gabriel Prince Niobodai Atopra Atunam Togbo Ashon Kwausunu. And I am at the Valco runabout within the Tema Metropolis. In today's edition, our focus is on a stretch of road from the Tema oil refinery end to Kung which according to residents and as we've also observed at first hand is in a very deplorable state. This road is strategically placed within the industrial hub of Tema and also a bypass or an alternative route to the main Tema runabout and Ada highway which usually becomes a point of traffic jam and so it becomes a convenient route for commuters, but then again, only to end up facing portals, which is really frustrating to the commuters. So today, I'm going to take you on a tour from the Tema oil refinery end to Boom and at Boom. We shall wrap up and as well start the second segment, briefly speak with residents of Boom who are up against an alleged selling of the Kung Cemetery land for private development, that is for estate development. But before then, I am starting with the road issue and engaging commuters of how the state of the road is really affecting them. Join me. How does this road affect you? It's too terrible. It's too terrible. One policeman I meet you, he will tell you that your light is not coming. Meanwhile, it's the road. You see, that there is a lot of potholes in the road. When you are going, you see that there is your light, some, some uh, feet go off. You have to try as much as possible to maintain the road for us. Since Metro TV, you are concerned Thank you for everything. Thank you for your concern. Bye bye. Thank you very much. So it's indeed a big worry. Let me speak to this driver. How is the road affecting you? No, I affect you, So this driver must be very shy to speak, but indeed, it's something that is affecting many commuters. Hello, we are from Metro TV looking at the state of the road. How do you find it? So bad. We need to do something about it. Our cars are being destroyed. Oh, someone is saying that, why have you delayed so much in coming over to us? We've been suffering. This is a big challenge for us all. Hello. How do you find this road? So there is a motor rider also passing by. We are suffering too much. How does it affect, How does it affect your vehicle? Yeah, always we are blasting tire problems. Always, I'm facing many problems for you. Thank you very much. So, he's also mentioned that the road is bad. So, there appears to be a consensus that indeed, this road is very bad. Just look at the dust that it's generating. I don't think less than so viewers see. Generating so much dust, and that alone could create health problems for residents here. So I am joining the Okada rider now. So he also shares his concerns. He had to stop upon sighting us to come and then share his challenges. Oh, eh yeah, eh yeah, eh yeah. Who wrote this thing? Not in the bad part. Your driver and my brother were on the part. First and second, sir. I'm going to get some of them. I'm going to get some of them. So appealing to the government, but when you look at the inscription on his vehicle, it is IBM Petroleum, a major petroleum corporation. And we are expecting that institutions like this would also help in fixing Road. So how is this affecting you? Oh, all the time. Bear yourself, you know. 
when the, the road there, where yourself you see the road all the time. If we, like we they take the people who they work for their company, we they ask them say why they go do uh, the, the road. But they, they say oh, they, they like uh, government they take them task big. So unless the government itself can't do the this thing. But this is a government, you know, they pass here. But all the time we they go shop, all the time we they go shop, 24 7 we they go shop. The road there, yeah, the road no good, uh, unless government itself can't do something about that. You Your face is so dusty. Uh -huh. Your mustache. Uh huh, you they see. So sometimes uh, we will bath, but sometimes the customers, the they think they will they bath. But because of the road, the poor road, he let everything scatter. The, the, you see. Every day with the wash moto, every day with the wash moto. The, the, everything is scattered, the road is no good. The road no good, good crowd, the road no good, the road no good. All the time, oh, boss, so yeah. I'll come to you, but this driver has just opened this car. How do you find the road? How does it affect you that, as a commuter? My brother, very, very bad. It's very, very bad. Look, you can see yourself. What is all this? May oil refunding road. Wonderful. You see, something like this, how can they say something like this? We, we are living in Ghana. How many years now Ghana have independence? And today, up to today, we are having a road like this in Ghana. It's a shame. It's a shame, my brothers. So something like this, you, you have, I'm very, very happy that you, you people are around. But this time, and I met you, you understand me? So you have to, I mean, people want to talk. So stay around, you see. Yeah, it's Thank you very much and we hope that the appropriate authorities would listen to your call and fix it. Best wishes and drive safe. So you were giving the leaders a message. So they step in. People keep rolling their glass to speak to us. Hello. Good to see you. How do you find the road? What's your message? What's your concern? Oh, road here. For over, since the first time, it's always been like this. And almost every six months, you have to change shocks. And it's, it's, not, it's not good. It's not good. In fact, the town folks are fighting. But we don't know. The, the other day, we saw some bulldozers on the road trying to do, I don't know what they are doing. But you can, you can take a report to them. Tell them that we are also part of the country. And that they should come and face our roads. We are not taking your report to them. You are reporting to them and speaking to them directly. We hope that they are fixed. All right, safe drive. So let me get to Christian. Christian invited the Community Watch team here to highlight it so that it is fixed. Christian, you've been working here. Your office is nearby. You've listened to the concerns. I know they aren't new to you, but Okay, so share, share the experience with us for 15 years. Can you imagine from the house? I, 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 I say at Tema, um, sorry, Usu, okay. you understand? From the motorway, you move, you move like six o'clock in the morning. When yeah. you get to come, 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 come. He's saying that the road don't good. The road don't con condemn. You see, you get to come to one around seven o'clock, thinking that by seven thirty you'll be at the office. I'm telling you, from from come to one to this place, you take like two hours. It's so bad, especially when it rains. It's so bad. A stretch bad. which ideally should take about 15, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It takes two hours. Two hours. Especially when it rains. It's so bad. Sometimes you wonder, you come down and you say, is this place part of Ghana? It's in the port city of, of Ghana. Tema. It, it's bad. And then there's, you see, that road over there is international road. From the Temaran about towards Ada, Zogakope, Aplau, then into Togo. The traffic situation is terrible, really. It's very, very terrible from the Temaran about. So if this road is done. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can see, you can see for yourself. Look at, look at, look at the number of uh, 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 big trash that pass. They were, they were all supposed to pass that place, but because that place there's a uh, lot of traffic there, then they move to this place. So if this place, I mean, it's, it's, it's well done, nobody will even talk about it, you understand? Uh -huh. So they should do something. So let viewers know some of the core corporations cited here. We have, we have, we have Aluex, we have Quantum, we have Goyle, uh, you see Tamawaya Refinery, Vaco is here, a 
lot of them, a lot of them. I saw green, I saw green there. So there were a lot of you know, big, big, big companies. So, so we, 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 we it's pray. Major, it's a major role, yes. So we are just asking the government to do something about it. It's not politics, it's not politics, because this road has been like 15 years. Yeah. So it's gone beyond the stay of a particular political party in government or the other. Exactly, exactly. It's beyond, it's almost 15 years. Uh -huh. So it's not about you know, this current government. But they are in power, so we just have to ask them to fix it fast. It's, 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 it's bad, it's bad. When it rains, you can't pass it. So we are just pleading, uh, pleading to them to you know, make sure they, 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 they do the right thing. All right. Hopefully, in no time, in few weeks or months to come, we should come back here, Hopefully. meet you yes. that yes. that time round, not to talk about the problem, yes. but to acknowledge the effort of the authorities that they are here fixing the road. Right, so I'm bright. Uh, I work in one of the companies here. Uh, they did a sort cutting last year, August, which was covered by you guys. The media men came to cover it. And I don't know whether they are following up or not. And this is the condition. Now, we can't use our cars. Sometimes we have to park and then board commercial vehicles just to save ourselves some money. Because we are always going to the fitting shop to service our cars. So please, we are appealing to the government to come back and then tell us something. Whether they are doing the road or they did a sort of just to win their elections. So we are just pleading that they come to us. You've actually, you've mentioned an important issue. The fact that authorities were here last year to cut sod for the construction of this road. And this was in 2020, meaning the election year. We had the election in December. And after the election, you haven't witnessed anything, any work on the road? No, nothing. As you can see, this one, they say... Uh, the road has been in this state for some time now. Mm -hmm. I started work here, let me say, 2017. This has been the situation of the road till now. So there is no progress. Maybe so, we, we have to continue to be hopeful. The president mentioned during his inauguration, when he was being sworn into office, that this year will be year of roads. Prime last year is the year of roads. This year will be the second year of roads. As we continue with our focus on dealing with a deficit in our road infrastructure, the development of our rail sector on which considerable resources and energies are being devoted will open up the country and lead to the creation of a more connected society and will also help realize the goal of regional and continental integration. So are you hopeful really that indeed this would be factored, especially as uh, sword had been cut? You are, you, are, you are a media man. Year of roads, I think this is not the first time we're hearing year of roads. Before COVID, we had year of roads and then they said what well, because of covid we couldn't do it now this year again year of roads and this is it so i don't know where the roads are being con constructed and my point is the same minister for roads so why why commissioning commissioning when you are not ready when you don't have the funds to to do it i don't know whether it's a problem with funding or not but then you did a commissioning commissioning means you are ready to start a project but one year on, the project is still standstill. Nothing has started. And so, I mean, we are confused. Yeah, we are very, very confused. And uh, to add up to what my brother just said, we, we have no political feelings attached. We are only being Ghanaians. Okay. So they should come back to the road and help us out. I, I like how you ended. The fact that this has nothing to do with partisan politics is to ensure that the road is fixed to relieve or bring relief to all the commuters of this stretch. So let's continue with the program. We are going to move from here to the Pong end of this road. It starts from the Tema Oil refinery area to the Pong Township. So join us to get to 
that end of the road. Here on Community Watch with me, Nyobudai Tokbo Ashon. So we are at the pone end of the oil refinery pone road and I have with me here a number of students who would share how this road is affecting their academic work. Hello, how are you all doing? We are doing great. Okay, so how is this road affecting your academic work? This road is affecting our academics well. When school closed, taxi drivers don't want to pick us because of the road. Even when we are from school coming home, you see all the roads bad, especially when rain falls, then we remove our slippers, walk into the, we walk barefooted. So we are pleading with the government that our road is not good. So you should come and do it for us. Are you not agreeing? The road is also very muddy. Sometimes when we are coming from the bush, we have been we have been crossing a certain river when at sometimes when it comes full, we can't even cross. We have to come all over this place, come and stand over here to pick up. So thank you all and I hope that uh, the authorities watching and also the major corporations within this enclave will listen to the plea of these students and then step in to fix the road for them. You are still on Community Watch here on Metro TV. Continue watching. So in wrapping up today's program, I am with two gentlemen of the aggrieved indigenous of Pung. If you would recall, in last week's edition, we brought to you their concerns regarding the state of the Bone Cemetery land, which they asserted that parts of the land are being sold off to private developers. We also engaged a representative of TDC, that's the Tema Development Corporation, and they mentioned that there have been requests from the Bone traditional leaders through the Pung uh, Municipal Assembly to then give out or approve so portions of the lands that have been acquired already are regularized for documents to be given to the developers accordingly. The representative of the TDC mentioned the institutions that they had cleared for the lands to be given and that the TDC isn't aware of any further transactions beyond those that they had given uh, approval to acquire the lands. But following the reportage, we've also cited letters from the aggrieved indigenous of Pung. These letters are served to the municipal assembly, that's the Pung municipal assembly, containing some demands. But fortunately, I have with me here two leaders of the association, so they give us more insights on this. And these letters are titled Demolition of Illegal Structures on Pum Public Cemetery Land. Demolition of Illegal Structures on Pum Public Cemetery Land. And the second one is titled Request for Document from Pum Traditional Council for Cemetery Land Regularization. People became alarmed when the story broke last week about the fact that the public cemetery meant to be the final resting place of the people of Pung and others are now being sold off. You are welcome to Metro TV's Community Watch, sir. Thank you very much. Um, what, what, what really informed your decision to serve these letters? Thank you very much. Our decision to serve these letters is um, as a result of your interview with the public relations officer at the TDC. He indicated that there are two entities that they've given permit to. And there are a lot of illegal structures at the cemetery. It is within the mandate of uh, the municipal assembly to demolish any structure within its jurisdiction if the person 
or the institution have no permits. So we want to follow the procedure. So we're giving them the letters to effect the demolition. That is so. The second letter, because um, if you go to the cemetery now, you see a lot of illegal structures. And our indication is that the traditional council has written to TDC to rezone or regularize the other parts for the people. So we want to cite that letter from the traditional council so that we will stop the, those illegal structures uh, at the, the construction of those uh, structures at the cemetery. Because I mean, the objective of the two entities that the TDC have rezoned is that they will use the proceeds to fence the whole cemetery. And to date, we don't know where the proceeds are because the cemetery have not been fenced. Okay. And you've given an ultimatum, which is that we want to serve notice to the Punkatamanso Municipal Assembly that the demolition of these illegal structures at the cemetery land should be carried out within seven days from today, or we will advise ourselves. This is because the Local Government Act gives the district, municipal and metropolitan assemblies the mandate to demolish all illegal structures within their jurisdiction. And this letter is addressed to the Punkatamanso Municipal Assembly, giving them seven days ultimatum. Some days have passed already. Have you heard from the municipal authority? We have not heard from them. Yesterday we were at the office to inquire from them whether they have received the letter. And according to them, uh, the letter was addressed to the, the coordinating director. And according to them, the coordinating director is on leave and it, may, it might come in two weeks. But then the letter has to be minuted by the chief executive before the coordinating director will effect any in the in the team or maybe as the engineers to go ahead and demolish so for now we are waiting for the chief executive the acting chief executive to cause it to minute on it for the engineers to start a demolition right you are still on community watch here on metro tv and coming your way from boom you've given an ultimatum seven days so if the seven days elapse what exactly is the next step what you are what are you going to do next we will still push until we get the response from the coordinating director we've been told he will be resuming in two weeks time and we hope that as soon as he resumes something will be done other than that <coughs> we know what to do at least we know what to do what what do you know or uh, what do you intend doing? What do you intend? <laughs> yes. We've been hearing this. This has virtually become like a cliche. You know, if you don't do this before this time, we'll advise ourselves. Sometimes when you are going to this uh, fight war, you don't exhibit all the accoutrement or the equipment you have. You know one thing. There are so many strategies that you can do. So what we will do next? We just don't want to tell people about the next thing that we want to do. But when the time reaches, then people will hear of us. Yes. Just before we go, it's been some weeks since we visited and then looked at the state of the cemetery. Uh, what's the current state? It's, it's becoming worse. You know, since two, some, two weeks ago, they were doing a lot of constructions. And where the construction was taking place is part of the cemetery land. We went there and then stopped them. The moment we went there, they stopped. Now, within that week, because we just went away, they started again. But you know the funny and the interesting thing? Last week when you show the whole event, now if you go there, no equipment is on there. The, the, the place they are doing the construction, no equipment, they stopped. So I believe now they have become so alarmed. I believe they are waiting for the next thing to happen. I told you, when you I told you I was at the cemetery, I have to go back to the place. Nobody is working. Nobody is working there. So we, we just don't want to take the loss into our own hands and then do whatever we like. We will continue to seek advice from other stakeholders. 
so that at the end of it, the whole Ghana will understand the citizens of Bo. Okay. He wants the cemetery to be left untouched and for it to serve the purpose for which it was allocated to the people of Pong. Upon TDC um, protocol officer, when you went there and then you interview him, through, through his response, he's saying the traditional council make a request to them. So we also re, uh, wrote to them to find out or uh, for them to give us response, to know exactly people, the reason that place for them. That is why we also wrote to them. According to him, what he said that day. So we are, we are waiting for them, them to give us a response. But I'm telling you, we wrote several petitions. Even we went to Greater Kra Regional Minister. We are seeking for his help because we, we know he can deliver. So we are appealing to him to come to our aid. And uh, the uh, government authorities, we are appealing to them to come to the, our aid. Other than that, 2015, um, um, similar issue was okay. And then people, some of people injured and so many things and other things. You're referring to the demonstration that you embarked on. The same cemetery we are, we are talking, we are complaining about. The same cemetery. So we are appealing to the authorities of Ghana and then the, the security agencies to, to, to do their work very well and to, I mean, to, for us to get our maybe um, our aim. That is to secure the cemetery from encroachment. Okay, but illegal encroachment, illegal encroachment. And I think we have a, a mafia people at the a, a, a traditional council, a group, mafia group. They are doing whatever they like. What do you mean by mafia? Mafia means they are claiming they are the um, traditional leaders or traditional council members, which they are not. They are suffering. They are traditional uh, land allocation committee, so-called land allocation committee, and they are disposing the co of the co land unnecessary. Unnecessary. Without thinking for future generations to come. Without thinking the future generation to come. So that is our problem. So we are seeking justice. Other than that, we cannot take law into our hands. But we shall advise ourselves. So that's how we end today's edition of Community Watch here on Metro TV. Remember, we've discussed or we've looked at two issues. First, the deplorable nature of the road from Tema oil refinery to the Bung, and the fact that it's been deplorable, it's been bad for years. And I know that. My colleague journalists have also been here several times to highlight the situation, hoping that it gets fixed. Boom, Entema, are halves of industries, corporations, and we know that as part of their corporate social responsibility, and also to then enhance their work, because when they produce items and products, it's this same road that they've been using with their tracks, for, for which it becomes incumbent on them to ensure that this road is fixed. So much as we are calling on government to have a look or to look back and ensure that the road is fixed, we are as well urging the corporate organizations within this enclave to also step up and do something about the Pong Tema Oil Refinery Road. And the second issue we've looked at is the state of the Pong Public Cemetery which concerned residents are crying and saying that enough is enough and that the encroachment on the public cemetery, the final resting place of the community members should be left untouched. We tried to speak with the municipal chief executive, but we were unsuccessful as uh, he wasn't really ready to speak to us. 
And that's why well, we've tried a few times to engage the traditional authorities, but that also proved futile. We shall continue to follow this up and keep you updated. My name is Gabriel Niobodai Atupratunam Togbo Ashon Kwaosunu. And I have done this together with my colleague Niadote Alote and Prosper Wanyo. Thanks for watching.